Thank you for joining us for this Network Notes for Parents on Allergies, Asthma, and School. My name is Andrea Tanner, and I'm a school nurse leader. Today, we're going to be discussing asthma. First, it's important to understand asthma. Asthma in children and teens does not go away, and it's the number one reason that students miss school. Asthma gets worse when students experience infections, they're exposed to their allergens, or with other triggers. It's also important to understand two different aspects of asthma. There's what we call quiet asthma and noisy asthma. With quiet asthma, the student is experiencing inflammation and swelling in the large and small tubes of the airways. You can't hear or see what's happening in the body with quiet asthma. Now, with noisy asthma, Students experience irritation triggers to the spasm, or they trigger spasms in their lungs or the bronchi. And this can cause the noisy aspects of asthma, coughing, wheezing, and shortness of breath. Now, when it comes to asthma care at school, we wanna focus on prevention, treatment, and management. With prevention, know your student's asthma triggers and try to avoid them if you can. And if your student's experiencing frequent symptoms, go to the doctor to update their medication orders. When it comes to treatment, take control of medication as prescribed. Even when the student's feeling well, it's important to stick to that medication game plan. Also, bring medication and doctor's orders to school. And take the right medication. We're going to want to make sure that we're using the right device at the right time so with the right medication. And when it comes to management, we wanna follow your student's asthma action plan. Students should learn to take care of themselves as they grow, so involve them in the planning process each year, more and more. At school, we wanna follow what's called an asthma action plan. And there's three zones to an asthma action plan. There's the green zone where we're just maintaining. We want to be in this green zone every day. Uh, this is where we're taking our controller medications and not experiencing too many symptoms. But when we get to the yellow zone, the student is experiencing some symptoms, not emergency ones, but experiencing some symptoms. So this is where they will start taking their rescue inhaler and following the plan for that medication's use. Then there's the red zone where we need to get help. This is where the student might experience breathing hard, breathing fast. You might see their ribs sticking out when they breathe, or they might have trouble walking, talking, or even sleeping. So this is the time when we need to get help. The action plan helps us know what steps to take at each level. Now, a lot of times families aren't quite sure. Is my student's asthma under control or not? We follow the rule of twos and ask ourselves some important questions. Do you have asthma symptoms or use your quick relief inhaler more than twice a week? Do you use two or more quick relief inhaler canisters a year? Does your student wake up at night from asthma more than twice a month? And if you answered yes to any of these questions, see your doctor to get asthma under control. Now, the Asthma and Allergy Network has some back to school checklists that can help you prepare for the next school year. Make an appointment with your child's doctor. Make sure medications and treatment are up to date. Uh, complete any school forms that are necessary and get that asthma action plan. Make sure your student knows how to use their inhaler and spacer if needed. Use those controller medications at home. Get yourself in a healthy routine before school starts. Talk to your school nurse if needed. And take any medications and medication orders and school forms on or even before that first day of school and encourage your child to fully participate in school and sports. It's really important to teach them that they can do anything and everything, even with their asthma. Thank you for joining us for this Network Notes for Parents. The mission of Allergy and Asthma Network is to end the needless death and suffering due to asthma, allergies, and related conditions through outreach, education, advocacy, and research. Please visit us at allergyasthmanetwork.org for more resources and information. We're working every day to breathe better together.